Hello folks, welcome. Linux Mint 22 Cinnamon. Today I'm going to talk about something that everyone can do. And that is to uh, use no coding skills to create web-based icons. So I have, um, and you're probably wondering, why do I have nine Amazon icons? Because I'm going to carry this a little bit further today. I'm going to talk about custom parameters also. But I'm going to talk about generating web-based icons for whatever purpose, including one for your home router. And, um, and I'll talk about maybe some of the reasons why you'd want to create one of those. Or just generally just creating simple icon, even to Linux Mint. Web-based icons. This tool is found in your internet section called Web Apps. Not a lot of instructions. That's why I do videos like this. So today's video, I have uh, Web Apps um, with some extra twists to it today with custom parameters. In either case, folks, anyone can do this. You don't need any coding skills. You can create these in about 10 seconds. It takes me longer to explain them, but I will give you lots of tips also. Filming in 1080, please adjust your YouTube player if necessary. Now, subscription key is in the corner. I have approximately, I haven't looked at, 423 videos to offer you on all kinds of things. If you're not a subscriber and you just subscribed, uh, I recommend that you read my mission statement also. For you folks running a regular web browser, you may want to look at this magnifying glass next to community. And you can do keyword searches because all my 423 videos are keyword indexed. So this tool can be found on Linux Mint 22 Cinnamon, the Mate desktop, and also XFCE. And you can use this for LMDE 6. So with a fresh install of Linux Mint 22, since I'm filming from that, you get the matrix icon installed by default. If you are on the previous version 21.3, this was blank. There was nothing. And a lot of people don't know how to use this. So I'm going to approach it from that angle, but then I'm going to carry it on a little bit deeper because these Amazon 1 through 9 have some special features on them. So keyboard shortcuts is here. I really don't use them, but they're there for you. Over here is about, and you don't find much information on this thing in the frequently asked questions FAQs. So that's why I do videos like this. I'm going to show you how to use web apps 1.3.7. Keep in mind things change over time. Today's date is August 20th, 2024. I will be showing you how to create one of these. That icon is currently sitting here, and I'm going to drag it to my panel. Actually, I'll put it over here instead, because I can't. These are single-click icons. So as you can see, this is asking for a password. And I'll show you how to create that. But I'm going to start with a basic one. Okay. So Web Apps is a creation tool. You create web-based icons. Whether you copy the addresses from your web browsers, it doesn't have to be Firefox, that could be Chromium or something else, but you uh, use the plus key to create things. You use the minus to remove. And anytime you have something highlighted and you do that, it's asking you for a confirmation. Once you hit this delete, this will be gone. Whatever is highlighted. This is an edit button. And that's a launch button. Okay, so I'm going to create one for Facebook to do this really quick. You can uh, just type in a single letter if you like, or type the whole thing. So um, whether you copy and paste addresses, let me just use any address. Let's use Linux Mint for a second. And I will copy the whole thing. Highlight the whole line, copy. I'll minimize that for a second and then do a paste. Okay, and then you can go see if there's icons online. And you can see Mint's got uh, three, three of these. Now keep in mind, a lot of things don't get found, so you may have to use this button. And you can even make silly emojis if you like. So I'm going to change this line because we're doing Facebook. So you can hand type this in also. So World Wide Web is www. Dot or period Facebook. And you need to complete that. I know you can see the icon. Period or dot com www period or dot facebook period or dot com i can also go find icons online if they become available 
and that's a big one and that's a dinky one. And I'm going to use this semi-rounded one. You can also assign your own icons and I do have a video on GIMP, how to take any photograph and turn it into an icon very similar to that. If you look through that video, it's from November of 2023. Not all icons will appear here. I'll be honest with you, it only finds a couple of them. And sometimes it doesn't find anything online and that, that's how you manually assign icons. So what's the category? Well, the category I really don't use, I leave it. But you can change that if you like. All of my icons get stored here, but I can use the search feature to find any of them, including that new one that I just, well, I haven't even created it yet, but I will be looking for it in a second by just typing in an F. So uh, browsers, I have two installed, Firefox and Chromium. Some of the custom parameters I'm gonna be showing uh, later uh, can also be used for Google Chrome, I believe. But I'm just using Firefox and Chromium. And again, I'll talk a little bit about custom parameters in a little bit. The navigation par, uh, bar I'm fond of, and the navigation bar is what again? That's a navigation bar, with or without, right? The private incognito window, if you feel you need that, go for it. I don't really use those. Now I'm finished. Now it's in my mint menu. I can just type in an F and there it is. I could put it here. I could also put it down here. Or I could right click and add it to the desktop panel or favorites. You don't drag icons on, on, on this menu in Cinnamon. You have to actually click add to desktop. But you can drag them into your favorites. That's what this category is called and on your panel. And these are single click icons. This still goes to Facebook. I get the privacy notice and I close that. And you'll get also, it'll ask you to reload that tab and open previous tab and I'm going to answer no. Firefox does maintain login information if you use it. If the web page you're trying to create it for needs login information, username and password in other words, if you decide to do a complete history removal including passwords then you'll have to re-enter that. The second thing that'll cause you to re-enter passwords is if you edit this. I believe that's a security thing. It used to be in the past. I haven't tested that feature lately though. But in case you run into that and you edit this, either the icon or some other piece of information, there's probably a high probability you'll have to re-enter your login info. Not a big deal though. Okay, I'll talk about creating one for your home router, which is non-internet. But we're gonna start up here. So all of these examples of Amazon 1 through 9 are going to the same website with different settings. All right, as I pointed out, there's not a lot of information in here. So let me give you the first example. The first example is without a navigation bar. Double clicking. It's using Firefox. No navigation bar. I can certainly double click to go full screen or I can use the old fashioned way. Uh, and then if I do have full screen and close, it normally remembers that. Just remember that about using the Firefox web browser. When I get into Chromium, not so much. So this one here is going to be using the navigation bar, which is uh, what I recommend. So you'll have the regular, uh, and by the way, a couple more tips if you've never seen any of my videos, hold down your control key if you're using a regular computer mouse with a scroll wheel, scroll back and forth to resize the innards. Okay. If you create tabs, uh, you can uh, temporarily get away with doing that. Okay. And um, I'll use my middle click button to create another tab. Uh, middle click buttons are something that uh, I wasn't going to talk about, but generally if you did not change the settings for your mouse, you can middle click and a middle click button is found underneath your scroll wheel on some of your computer mice. Not all of them, but mine has it. And I can use middle clicks also to close tabs and I'm not aiming for the X. Okay. Just remember that when you reopen that, um, it will not start that. So I'm going to um, open this one in Chromium. So this starts a half page. Again, this is a Chromium browser. Okay, this was Firefox, right? 
with navigation bar and you can of course do it without. So the Chromium browser by itself with no settings uh, has an isolated profile and private incognito window for defaults. The second one here is the isolated profile is turned off and visibly you're not going to see any difference. It's still a half page. Even if I go maximum, either my way or the old-fashioned way, I'm just double clicking. Uh, you know, I double click on this line right here. If I leave it in full screen and close and reopen, it will still open it in half a page. I have some special provisions to take care of that. This one says, and this might be a good idea to get your screenshot tool or better yet hit subscribe dash dash start dash maximized all lowercase you can make screenshots at any time okay so is this the one because they all have the same name on them that's standard and I think it was Amazon 5 this will go full screen even if I reduce that and close it and reopen Amazon 5 it still goes full screen and I'm using a chromium web browser because it's using a custom parameter. And that parameter is dash dash start dash maximized. So that's Amazon 5. Amazon 6 goes full screen F11. Are you familiar with that function key? F11. Okay, there's only an X over here when I click in the center of that page. This opens every time that way because my setting is dash dash start full screen. A little different for you. Okay. So the F11, if you have it reassigned on your laptops or even console computers, tower computers, um, you may want to think about that. F11. Close. What's another way in case you don't remember that? That would be Alt and F4. That closes the browser totally. Alt and F4 closes any window, including this one. I'll have to reopen that now. So basically, F11 is used for maximizing. Okay? So I'll reopen that back up. So this was with the full screen. And the one before that was sorry wrong one maximized okay now I'm going to uh, go over to here and we are going to talk about custom window sizes now dash dash window dash size equals 600 comma 400 okay opening that up custom window size right click system settings I am filming in 1080 if I switch this to 4K, then I'll have to do something different with that window. But more importantly, it's still small on my 43 inch screen. But I could adjust that. All I need to do is change this number here to like maybe 800 and change this to 600. So I'll have an 800 by 600, a bigger window. Again, for custom sizes on a Chromium web browser. You can also achieve that on a Firefox web browser but the custom parameter is different it is dash height space 400 space dash width space 600 example of that one is this these two boxes are the same okay one has a navigation bar and the other one does not this is a Firefox and this is chromium okay you can always back these videos and do screenshots. All right, what did I do on this one? Um, let me check the settings. Oh, it's just without a navigation bar. Not a big deal. I think I already showed that actually. So we can type in addresses. We can go to any banks or web addresses and make web-based icons. Uh, deleting these things, again, I can create Facebook in 10 seconds, so I'm not worried about that one. Uh, but home routers is a little different so this one's currently asking me for a password now what would be the advantage of creating one of these well first of all you can obviously do this in a regular browser 
but the convenient factor of being able to reboot your router in a hurry, check your firmware, turn on and off the guest network, can all be achieved by clicking an icon. How do you do that? Well, your router information is actually in with your network settings. You look for default. So your default route is your route to your normally your internet service provider. And most of your home routers usually have numbers like these. This is not private. That's why I'm not clicking the other one. Uh, but more importantly, um, I don't have a dummy router to set up today. So anyways, uh, I'm going to recreate that for you. It's plus. You don't have to put HTTP. Uh, web apps will put that in for you. So just type in home router. Uh, as in my case, I'm going to say number two because I already have one. It doesn't do me any good to find icons online because this is my own address, internal, behind the firewall. So your standard internet, uh, sorry, your standard IP addresses uh, on your routers, because your router is always number one, big cheese, head cheese. Okay, enough in you and those. 192 period or dot, 168 dot, 0 dot 1 or 1 dot 1. Those are your most common addresses. All right, if you want an icon for that, besides silly emojis, which you can assign, is uh, type in network. And you'll have a bunch of network icons that you can play with. And uh, I'm going to pick that one because it has uh, fi fancy looking dots on it. You can, of course, assign your own icons. And my rule still holds if you uh, assign any icon on your system, you put them on a folder. You do not move that folder after you assign an icon and put it in your system or rename the icon because during a reboot it needs to find it. Otherwise these go blank. If you want to be safe, use a system icon. Again, just keep the same uh, parameters. Navigation bar looks good. And now we can test it. Get the privacy notice, close, and it should be in, in the the web category and it is it's this one I'll put it right next to the other one so you can see the difference in the icons all right inevitably somebody sends me a, um, a note I had um, I was doing this on last year also and somebody sent me two two notes on this or comments I, I put in uh, an S in here and it doesn't work do we know what an HTTP is and HTTPS? Some of you do and some of you don't. The S is security certificate. Most, if not all of your home routers do not have a security certificate. That's why when you put an S in here and you try to run this, I'll just do it from here, you get an error, a potential security risk because your home router does not have security certificate and neither does your computer. That's why it's giving me that flag. So don't help it. You normally don't want to put an S in there. I'll just remove it and rerun that. Now it should connect just fine. Because your router needs to challenge you with a password, username and password in most cases. Now I'm going to move on. So that one is uh, just a goofy icon that goes to what it says house on it. It's home and house. So I'm going to take a, a website like this one that has absolutely no icons available and I'm going to create one of these for you. Paste the address. I'm going to call it uh, home2 and click that icon thing online and you'll see it clock several times. It doesn't find anything. You need to assign it an icon unless you want to keep the web app manager icon. And you can assign it silly emojis if you like. Okay. S this stuff is still the same and there you go the home to and the house go to the same website i'm not going to clear that out just giving you some examples so whether you are doing this for your um, frequently paid bills on your banks your credit cards your electric companies Whatever it might be, whatever you do in your web browser, you can create an icon for it as a link. Some of them do have their own icons, like this one, for instance. I'll recreate this one. I'm just going to cheat for a second because I need the address. 
I'll delete it and recreate it. Let's just see how you quickly you can do this. I don't bank there, but more importantly, you can see Chase has several different size of icons. I'll pick this one and that, and I'm done. Get rid of the privacy notice. Again, it's up to the browser to maintain your login info. And that Chase icon is now found in here. And I can drag that here or here if I don't want it on my panel. This will still go to Chase. I get that uh, previous tab thing, which is fairly normal. And again, one more time, it's up to the browser to maintain the login information if you choose to save it. Okay removing the icon and these also and you can have them either in this favorites area keep in mind you can always right click add to favorites that's this area or just maintain them in here if you don't have the matrix icon and you would like to have it maybe you uh, upgraded and you don't have it let me go to Linux Mint's website and let me link on their um, blog section and it will be this one so the matrix help channel which i don't use and i'm not part of uh, this is their address to element.io and you can take this this is going to ask me about persistent storage i don't use this so i'm going to say block but you may want to click yes and sign up however creating the icon you grab the whole line you copy it you close the browser you can close this too and hit the plus key, paste it, and it finds the icon. And you can call it, um, I'm gonna call it Matrix 2. Uh, we'll use Firefox Navigation Bar. Now I created another one of those. On that note, folks, thank you for watching.